Guitar and Excel, C major, A minor scale, fret number seven, focusing on the F note. What's that? No, I'm doing it, Phil. I'm doing the next recording for crying out loud. Get off my back. What's that? The, the squeaky wheel gets the grease? That's an interesting phrase. You know, I grew up with a different phrase, Phil. It's called the annoying booger gets picked and then flicked against the wall where it's hung out to dry until it can hang no longer, at which point it tumbles to the cold, hard concrete where it lies in despair, broken and in agony until the, until the dog eats it. So stop squeaking your squeaky wheel at me for crying out loud, you annoying booger. And just kidding, Phil, but not really. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay. You can just follow along. But if you do have access, it's a great tool to run scenarios with. Quick recap of our project, noting that you don't have to have watched all prior presentations to have follow along with this one. But a general overview of the overall project can be useful. So let's go back to that first tab. We've been mapping out the C major scale and you can think of also related modes. We started out doing so in open position. Open position for us defined as frets zero through three, noting that that E string represents the low or heavy E string, the one closest to the ceiling on our worksheet. The funnest way to learn open position is typically to create the chords from the scale. So we created the chords within the C major scale, starting with the one chord, C major chord, mapped it out, discussed it in detail. Going then to the four chord, because it has also a major chord construction. Then we went to the five chord, then back to the two chord with a minor chord construction. Same with the three chord, then to the six chord, and finally to that seventh diminished chord. Then after having done that, we basically through the constructions of the chords have mapped out the entire scale position in open position that looks like this. We then wanted to move to the middle of the guitar, fret number five, learn this position not by primarily chord constructions to start out with, but rather by scales. So we might be able to tie then that into the chords that we've created in position number one. And then we'll get into more detail about the chords in that position as we go as well. So we mapped it out in position five and we discussed it in detail and then we focused on particular notes within that position in fret number five. So now we're moving to fret number seven and we're doing a similar kind of project. We then moved to fret number seven and we're gonna learn basically the C major scale and related modes in fret number seven. We mapped it out and then we started targeting notes within that position starting with the C and now we're moving up to targeting the F notes. So we're going to be in starting on fret number seven. This yellow uh, square represents the place that we're focused in on. This red square represents the prior position that we looked at in the prior section. And then over here, of course, you have your open position. So I know this is quite colorful, can be a little bit overwhelming. So quick recap of what the colors mean. We mapped out on the on the very bottom the blue notes, which represent the the scale positions for the major scale, and you can think of the related modes. Then we put on top of that the green notes, which are going to be these notes, which are basically the pentatonic scale. If you're thinking of it as a C major uh, scale, because the, these pentatonics are usually tied to the major and the minor, five out of the seven notes. And then we put on top of that, the point of focus, we're focusing in on the F. And then we put the, the chord constructions for the F. So we have the one, the three, and the five. So you could basically think of it as everything that's not white is something that, that is included here. It's kind, it's kind of like the, the, new, uh, the new diversity, equity, and inclusion rules, right? Which, all, the, all the not, anyway. So we have all those, so all those are basically included in our scale. Within those colored notes, which are the C major scale and related modes, we're focused on the four chord, which is the F major chord, looking at the one, 
three, five of that four chord, the F major chord, these notes fitting into the C major scale and related modes. So we have then the one is going to be the light green, the three is going to be the red, and then the five is going to be yellow. So in that order, those are going to be the most important notes that we're going to be targeting this time. We're targeting then this green note as the one and the second most important, the A, which is the red. And then the third most important is going to be the yellow, which is the C. And then all other colored notes are basically fair game. What do these brackets mean? This is us basically breaking out the guitar into sections, five sections, which we can name by shape. We can call this section, which we worked on in the prior presentations, as what I would call uh, position number one, or you can call it a G-shaped position. We'll talk more about that when we get to the caged system. Our major focus this time is on what I would call position number two, or the E-shaped position. And you can see there's some overlap between these two positions. So this last position, which I, you can kind of think of starting on fret number five, is going up to fret number eight. And then this position has some uh, overlap within these this area. If we take a look at that on the guitar, we could say, okay, the last position, which most people know pretty well because the pentatonic uh, shape fits in it, which looks like that. But this is the whole major scale which looks like that. If I just look at the top, I can see there's gonna be crossover between these two notes. So in this position, we're looking at this position, which we could see if I just looked at the top string, starts like that. And that's gonna be our uh, major point of focus. Now I'm gonna move this one back a little bit just so we can kind of really just see that yellow position because that's gonna be our point of focus here. And so, so now when we're focused in this position, we're kind of concentrating on that F. Now there's a couple ways that you can do that. You could say, well, if I'm still thinking of myself in the key of C, then I might be thinking of the C and I'll look at this in an open position because I think it's easier for people to see. If I'm thinking of myself in a key of C where well, this is a C shaped position, usually I can start on a C and then end on a C, and then I can throw in an F, which looks like this in open position, and practice my F as something I play while I'm playing in the key of C. However, it's easier oftentimes if we're trying to practice my F and how to, how to navigate around an F to try to make it the central point. So instead of us basically saying, I'm gonna switch to an F major scale, we're just going to say, I'm going to keep being in the C major scale, but make the F the focal point, which basically means we're going to be playing in a mode, a Lydian mode. Uh, but I, and we'll talk about modes more later in a future present section. But for now, I would just think I'm playing around the four chord, right? That's going to be the idea. So we're playing around the four. So I'm going to make it the starting point. And then when I move to something else like a C, an A, a G, and then I'm going to go back. To, to the F to try to make it the tonic. Now it can be a little tricky to make the F the tonic, the four chord the tonic. Uh, one thing you might try to do is, is say, what's the best note to lead back to that F? What's the fifth of that note is the way you would question that typically. And you can see right here, the fifth is the C. The C is the thing that leads back. So in other words, if C was my tonic, the G, the fifth of the C leads back to the C. The fifth here is the C leads into the F. And you can give a little bit more emphasis too by saying, if we take this C chord, we can add then the dominant seven, which is right here. So there's the dominant seven. It's outside of our chord. So we learn the rules and we learn when we could break them. We'll talk about why that might be useful to do possibly in future presentations, but it gives a little bit more resolution. One reason that is, is because it basically is a half step away. So it's actually resolving back a half step. And then this note is in the C shape. And when I resolve up, then it gives you those half steps. Those half steps usually give you that resolving type of feeling. If I played that up here, what you would do is take this C shape and then pick, pick up your pinky. So we talked about the C shape last time. And pick up your pinky and you're revealing than this note if you're playing a C, uh, a C 
This is an, an, an E major shaped C chord. And then I pick up my pinky. And then you can resolve that then to what we'll see here, which is going to be the F. Okay, so note when we do this, we're, we're basically in another mode. So I'm going to show you the other mode just so we can take a look at it. Although we'll think about ourselves as just playing around the four. So I'm going to hide some of our cells in our worksheet. And so here we're all the way over here on Lydian. I'm going to right click on that and then hide all of that stuff. So, so you can see basically the Lydian, if we, con if we just converted everything, then the Lydian, we, be, we would be playing, making it the one. Everything's the same in the Lydian. Lydian is the related mode where we basically make the four the one. So, so by learning all the shapes in the C, the C scale, we're learning all the related modes uh, however, it's still a little difficult to wrap your mind around around the other modes. We'll talk about that later. So right now, we're just going to think of it as though we're playing around this uh, this F or the fourth of a C major and trying to make it the tonic. Now, here's our position up top. So note that the first thing you might do just to get your ear around and thinking of yourself as making the F the tonic is play the scale, uh, but play it from from here to here, from the F. So I'm going to start on the F instead of playing the scale up here, right? Because then it sounds like I'm trying to play something with the B as the root, or instead of starting here, where I basically sounds like I'm making the C the root, I'm going to start here where that's where I'm trying to make the root. So there's my F right there. And then I can count it out if I want, which can be a little tricky to count it starting at a four but I'm going to start at four and get back to four, right? There's only eight notes or seven notes. So I'll finger it first. So I'm going to say this is going to be four, five, and then we're going back here, six, seven, eight, or one. So, and then two, three, four. So I'm ending here, right there, and that's the octave. So this is going to be four, 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 four. four. Right, so all I did here is I started here at the four, and I just counted up all the colored notes in our position, going from uh, four, then five, I'm calling that six, and then seven, and then eight or one, because I'm going back around the horn, one, and then two, and then three, and then four. And you can do that same thing here, starting at the four, and then five, and then the six, seven, eight, or one, and then two, and then I'm going to go back two, one or eight, seven, six, five, back to the four. Okay, so, so I, if you were to, just to get that in your head, that kind of tone, you can also do the same thing, making it the one, and then you would be in a Lydian, right? But, but I think this is actually good practice to lead into the Lydian, but we'll talk more about that later. So four... Five, six, seven, eight, or one, two, three, four, and then four, five, six, seven, eight, or one, two, and then I'm going to go back to one, or eight, seven, six, five, four, and then we can also add then the chord constructions as we start to look at this. So now I can see F here and F here. What F chords can I play within this section? Well, the major thing that we can see in here, I've mapped out with the yellow. And you can see that looks like an A shape, which most people kind of see that, just these three notes. And that's the same as this A shape up top, which we haven't really talked about as much because it's not in the C major, but I'm, you're probably familiar with that shape. If I barred it off, I'd move it up here. And there's our A shape. So I have to grab that one to get the full shape. But really, the main thing is this, the thing we're lacking oftentimes in this shape is that three chord, that A that's, that's down here. So this is, we can play it this way. If I'm just playing it this way, I can play it like that. I can also see up top that we have, I'm going to use this orange one, that C up top. So I could grab it this way. I have another A back here, and I could grab it then uh, this way. So uh, that's useful. That's a useful one as well. And then 
Another one that people I don't think grab as often is if, if you're in this bottom part, you can see your A shape is like that. You have this right there, which you can grab this way. I can pick up this one and then these two uh, up top. Boom, boom, boom. So those are going to be the major shapes that I can kind of always return to. So if you play it in a scale, uh, you don't even have to count it off, but every time you get to an F, you might then play a chord with it. So I can start here. So we have the full chord, and then I'm going to start four, five, six, seven, eight, or one, two, three, four, and then I'm going to play these three. I'm just going to play it this way, duh, 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 those three, and then four, five, six, seven, eight, or one, two, then I'm going to go back to one or eight, seven, six, five, four. This time I'll play it this way. So now I'm playing du du du, and then I'm going to go four, three, two, one or eight, seven, six, five, four. Back to playing my full chord like this, and then you could go down the other way. So four, three, two, uh, one or eight, seven, and then I'm going back up seven. Eight or one, two, three, four, boom. All right, so so you could go through it a few times just to basically get that scale, but try to foot your focal point on the Fs, which are going to be these, those F notes. Okay, so so once we have that, the couple strategies we can use to practice with this is we could be playing something in our open positions where we learn the chords and then jump all the way up here to kind of noodle around and see if we can go back and forth. That's one practice that we can have with it. We can also try to play just in our position up top, possibly going back and forth. In this case, we've learned the C and the F, so we can make either of those, try to make them the tonic and go back and forth between those two. And then of course, we can try to blend together the, the shapes that we have learned. So we've learned the shape starting in position five, we can try to play some chords in here and blend back and forth between these two or going all the way from our open position and trying to find lines that we can go up to to get to our our positions up here and back to have a smooth run all the way through. Note, noting the general idea is that you can play anything in any position. So I should be able to play any chords I want within a four fret fingering but it's nice to be able to change the fingering going back and forth because that will give you different voicings uh, of of the chords so let's start off like with that first one you might start back here and say okay if i'm going to be starting back here i can basically target then uh, a note up top and it might actually let's start up here first and just start trying to learn what types of things I can play around this F note. And, and so one way we might do that is just to start putting our finger on that F note and say, what can I kind of noodle around with that F note? What can I reach? So I can say, all right, I have here, I have this available to me. Let's make another one. I can go up to here, doo -doo, so that's always good. That's not one of my main notes, it's a green. What I like is that yellow note, that's my fifth. That's my power chord. And then obviously all of those notes going down to here is my actual chord. So that's always useful for me to be able to go back from if I'm just on this note. And then I could reach out here, which is, which is a bit of a stretch. And that's why, but it's a little bit easier up here in the higher registers. That's outside of our shape, but it's reachable with your pinky, uh, that A. And that A, although I didn't color it properly here, is the third. So that's a useful one to pick up. So right, if you switch off between this A and the C, you're picking up the, the one, uh, the 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 third and the fifth alternating so that's nice we can reach the one above it as well so you can you can you can reach that so power chord full chord I 
stop those two. Can double stop those, all of those. So that's a useful position, of course. And then I can also say, well, that the other third is down here. So a useful way to, to navigate this position would say, well, what if I put my pivot finger here? And then what can I reach? I can always reach back up to my to the root. So that's my root. So now I've got the one and the three, which is the which is the basis, the major two chord notes of the chord. And then I could pick up my five with my pinky finger. So now I'm alternating with my pinky from here. So I'm doing that same kind of shuffle thing where I'm going from the one to three, the one to the five. So that's kind of nice. And then I can also play anything within this position, noting, noting I have another F down here. So I can reach you know, this box from this area, and I could probably go easily shift up and down from here to the D. So I can, so I can start here, so I get the ring of that F note, and then... stops and then once I go up here I have these three strings which are basically that A so it's kind of an ending point I can easily reach this one up top too which means I have all of my note that's the full chord so I can be from here. And then close it out with the full chord up top. I've also been experimenting with my putting my finger like on these two. And then and then this and then this finger up top because that allows you to do a little bar right there. And that allows you to, to easily go back and forth between those two strings go up with your pinky to that fifth. And it lets you resolve. It's a little bit unusual of, or it's a little bit hard to get your finger to do, you know, it seems a little awkward at first, but I find that to be somewhat useful. And then you could do the same thing basically down here and say, okay, if I'm on, th this is an F, this is an F, so if that's my home, that's right around this shape. So every time I come back to that F, I can kind of play that shape there. And so I can say, all right, what can I, I noodle from in that shape? It's probably easiest uh, to start that shape with your, with your, um, with this finger, ring finger. So the easiest thing is to go back to here. But it's easy to go back up here too. So, and then once I land on that note, I always feel like playing those three as like my A, like my A shaped F major chord. And then we could of course go back from here to you know these notes and back into our system here all right so you can kind of noodle around uh within and say what can you feel around that note and then we could say, okay, now that I, if I target this note right there and I play something in open position, here's, here's my F in open position right here, which you can play the full bar chord. That's what these red notes are. You can play it like that, or you can play it like that. This is, for me, the more comfortable way to play it. And then if I was to move the shape up into the middle shape, this is the shape we get, which you can see as a D-shaped C, uh, a D-shaped F, 
you can see it here, but or you can just see this triangle, and then that converts into this shape. So we'll talk about that more in a second. But right now, let's just say we're gonna go from an open position, and then I'm targeting basically this F, right? Once you get some simple ideas with the F, you could throw a C in there since that's the other chord we've played thus far, going from an F to a C, and you could jump up to the same position and noodle around in the C, but I'll just noodle around with the C in the same spot. So I could start with an F, C, F, C. So that's one way we could also target then this one, same kind of idea going back and forth and say, now I'm going to target this F. So we have that F and then which gives me that kind of A position. So, so I can be here, try to see what I'm going to play. All right, so I can say... kind of noodle around that's one way we could uh, noodle around with it we can also say okay can I convert and move from the position five that we looked at last time to position six so position five is in here most people see it as like the pentatonic position starting on a but we're thinking of it here if we're thinking of it in the key of F again so if I was looking at the at, at uh, the key of F which is here then the chord construction leaning back would be looking like this, right? So if I could say, okay, this, which is basically a C shape, the C shape is like this. We'll talk about the cage system later, but you can see that C shape here, which doesn't, isn't exactly correct because we can't pick up the fifth this way, but you still get a good sound. You're going to mute this string and I can play it this way. And then if I want to pick up the fifth, I got to play it this way. And then I can actually pick this one up. So I'm leaning back duh, 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 to these, to this here. And then I pick, I could pick up this F as well. If I wanted to grab that. Uh, you can also play it this way, which people often see as a D shape. And it is when you, it's an, a D shaped F major chord, because you're leaning back to that, if you lean back to that D. But if I look at it leaning forward, it's actually also part of the C shape. So I have this D triangle, which is an F shape. And then I can say this, this is my pivot point there, which leads into this C shape. And there's my pivot point there, which I can then convert into this shape. So what I'm targeting is this note when I'm going from this shape over. Once I get to that note, I can jump over to this shape. And another way we can see uh, uh, is this top shape becomes useful too, where I have this, this, these three. So if I can get into that shape, then again, that pivots over to where I want to be in uh, this shape. So if I was playing something uh, over here, I might start from here and say, how can I move from basically this D shaped F chord and then kind of end up on this F note up there. And, and I'm going to noodle around in between in this shape. So I could do something like, all right, there's that. And then that's basically another A minor, but I'm not really thinking about chords. I'm just saying well, that fits. That's my starting point because it's an F and then I'm going to go like maybe something like that. And then I'll walk my way up. There's a, that's an A minor chord, but I'm just kind of messing with and that's actually a D minor, but I'm just, I'm not really thinking about it. And then I can pull that up like that, maybe. 
and now I'm pivoting over to my F this way. So I just went. I'm just walking up. And now I'm playing the three note combo here. And then I'm just going to take those two. And this is another way you can play basically that C shaped F major chord, which I can then pivot into this shape. Or if I don't want to do those three note combos, I could just say one note at a time. Sliding up to right there. And then I could play that with my C shape or I can convert it to, the, to this shape. Now I'm in this position. If I'm going back the other way, I can start here and say, how can I start from this shape where I have this and this and then get back to that D shape? Well, I can go, okay, my easiest finger to move is this one. And I could just go. And I'm just walking down, right? Now, if you want something different than just walking down, that's when you do the little double stops or something. And I'm just going to, I notice those three are in there. Double stop. Double stop. And then moving that up. And that brings me back to this shape. Going back the other way. Double stop. And then back to, back to this shape, right? We could do the same thing and say, how can I walk from there up to here? Or, uh, or right, I can, you know, I can. I'm just trying to find ways to walk up and back. I can do that same concept from my open position and try to find lines. So now I'm over here in my F shape and I'm going to say, okay, I didn't talk much about this shape. I know that G shape fits within here. We'll talk about this shape later. But I can see going through that midsection, what, what can I do to find a line that's just going to go all the way, all the way out. So maybe I start here. I know my starting point, And then I'm going to somehow get up to this shape. So maybe I play something like down here in this shape. And then I get up. Right, and then I get up to this F shape, and then I'm gonna walk it back up to here. Right, so I can say, okay, if I'm in here, I'm gonna pivot on this finger now. It's an easy finger to pivot on. And I know if I bring that up, this little box, I know it's fair game. So I can be like, all right. And that brings me to this box. So then I can go, and, all right, that's fair game. And then I and then I have the same puzzle we got before, which is to walk it back up here, right? I could do the same thing going back. And now I've gotten to this shape, and then I'm gonna say, okay, I know this little. I could double stop those or something. I know the open notes are cool to play and then back to that position. So I can find little lines uh, going going up and back. I can lead with these two fingers maybe and say maybe I'll try to say, let's take these two fingers and see if I can move it up you know, somehow to this position, right? So now I'm gonna go, instead of pivoting on this finger, I'll pivot on these two. Double stop, double stop, double stop. Maybe I lay this finger down, triple, A minor, E minor, but you don't have to think about the chords, I'm just thinking that fits in my scale, and then back to here again, right, so. looking for lines to take me all the way uh, from here back to here and and see see you know what we can target uh, going from going from one to the other and so that's the 
those are the general ideas of it. Uh, just so, and we'll we'll look at that more in terms of uh, of modes. Same idea in a later presentation. But notice that if you're looking at the C major scale, you can see that if you just make a central point, these other modes, the central points, or play around the four, then you actually have a whole lot of things that you can kind of uh, play with and get to know these chords. And once you get to know the four chord as it's related to a C, you can, it'll be way easier to then do the same idea and switch your mind to be playing in, say, an F, uh, F major. So just to get an idea of that, let me see if I can copy. I'm going to go back on over to our prior worksheet and say this is the OG worksheet. And, and I'm going to change it to an F, which is a 9, and pretend now that that is the 1. So now we're going to say that, that if that was the 1, then I'll copy my table. Let's copy it just from right here. Go do, 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 do. I'm going to copy just that bit and go over here and paste it. Uh, paste it one, two, three, and then paste the formula or the formatting, the formatting two, and then, okay, so then, and just let's map this out as though we were in the key of F, just so you can get the related idea of it. What if we were in an F major scale instead of playing the four of a C major scale? So if I map this out, we go, let's make this to do, I'm going to return my show always, and then conditional formatting. So we'll say this is equal to this. I know this is a little tedious, uh, so bear with me. I'm just going to say this is that, and then I'm going to say this is all of the major scale of an F. Now, here's the dit, and then we'll say formatting dit. Da, da, and then da, and this is going to be an A. I have found a way to do this at, with formulas one time, but it's actually still more difficult. It takes about the same amount of time as doing this tedious process. So, uh, but I did look it up. Uh, I still think the Excel could improve this particular feature to make it a little bit faster. I don't like the way their formulas work because they make assumptions, which they probably have a reason for doing it, but it's still frustrating. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I'll tell you that. Anyways. Uh, and then I'll say that this is going to be equal to the one, which is now we'll make that green. And then this will be equal to the three, which will make red, and the five, which will make yellow, t -t 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 yellow, okay. And so if I was looking at, we started here and compare, compare this, I think I'm missing the E somehow. What happened to the E? Let's do it again. Where's my E? Let's say, okay. I think that might be more right. All right, let's compare this shape to what we saw up top when we were looking at this. Is this is that the one we were looking at? There's too much stuff going on. There's, it's chaos. It's complete chaos. Let's hide. Order needs to be restored to the city. It's anarchy. It's anarchy out there. Okay, <laughs> so now we could see that if I look at this same shape, you could see this the same shape fits in it. Here's our A shape, but it's not the same structure because now we're looking at an F major chord. So this, I want to get try to just introduce this idea because I, again, I think a lot of people just kind of randomly learn different chords and whatnot and then they have a real hard time stringing them together or thinking about what patterns will fit together so so we'll talk we'll, we'll go to the major chord 
later we're spending all our time on the C right now because that's the easiest one to understand but if you learn that and all the related modes you have a lot to work with and you can still learn again all the chords in relation to the C major scale and then you'll have that hopefully more grouped up idea of how everything fits together so that when we, we can then do the same thing with other uh, scales and go to like you know the F probably the G would be the next uh, best scale and then we could see we could see for a guitar at least and then we could see all it and all of its you know related modes and related uh, 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 chord shapes in a way that you can actually put the things together you know you're not just learning these pieces that you don't know exactly how they uh, fit together that's the general idea so we'll talk more about different scales hopefully uh in different pr in future presentations but we're doing the deep dive into the major for now and we'll actually talk about the modes more in detail later so we get a, a grip on them